A good day to you. Welcome to this instruction video. It's on rotation axis machining and we're going to make a small scale model of the Venus head scanned from the Venus de Milo statue, the famous one in the Louvre en Paris. Okay, here is my desk proto. We're going to start obviously with loading a geometry. The Venus is one of the files in my data directory. Here it is. We load it. Here is the Venus. Oh, I didn't have it on rotation. Here it's rotation. We have the Venus head. This is the thing we gonna machine. Okay, first thing that we can see is the lamp icon in the tree for part is red. That means the part is invalid. It's not possible to calculate the tool path. Okay, why? Easiest way to find out is just open the part parameters, double click. Here are my part parameters. I say OK and Desproto tells me why it cannot be machined. It's far too large for my very small milling machine. OK, now I know why. Uh, I could also have seen this in the geometry information box. Here it is. So it's 400 millimeters high, far too much. Um, scaling is needed. I want to machine a model of about 75 millimeters high and I calculated the scaling factor needed is, is 0 0.18 millimeters. So I go to my part parameters, go to transform and for the scaling I say 0 0.18 millimeters apply. You can see here the value has changed. It is now 75 millimeters high. I will close it again. Um, the lamp icon at this time is orange for uh, the parameter parameters are being edited. When I say OK, you can see it's yellow. The error sign has disappeared. OK, that's the thing we want to machine. Next step is we need to align the geometry with rotation axis. Now you can see the Y axis here. It's aligned with the Y axis. The rotation axis in Desproto always al is aligned with the X axis. That's called an A axis in NC uh, terminology. It's a bit like a barbecue spit, though the, the example is not very appropriate here, but it explains what we mean. So we need to rotate 90 degrees around Z to get it properly aligned. Part parameters again, transform 90 or in fact minus 90, apply and here we can see the geometry. Okay, we have it aligned, we have it sized. Next step is to say use rotation axis because it's rotation axis machining. It sets a few parameters automatically. I'll explain more uh, el elaborate on these later on. Um, when I again say OK, it gives me an error message. Again, it's too large. What happens? Well, we can clearly see what happens. It rotates around a real x-axis, the position y is 0, z is 0, but my geometry is on a large distance, so a very large cylinder is a result. This cannot be machined. We need to uh, pan or to, to, to move the geometry that the rotation axis in this, is in the center. Again, part parameters, that's a op an option that's present here. Again, transform, it says center geometry. So wherever your geometry is, it will be translated in space that the axis of rotation now is in the center of the geometry. OK, and here is what we need. You see the segments, the green lines is a segment now is a, a cylinder block. And by rotating, it can be machined from all sides. OK, well, what more part parameters are present? Let me briefly check, double click again. We have done use rotation axis. We have scaled. We have rotated. We have centered ge the geometry. Supports are not needed. The segment was set to use upper half only. It was automatically done because when the cutter comes from here, from above, there is no need to travel any deeper 
than the z than the center of the geometry so only the upper half is machined but we machine from all sides and so still the complete uh, model will be machined ambient area will ignore that translate is an important one though you can see uh, or this is the default translation setting for z you can see it has been automatically set to none none that means the z is zero position here you see the blue orientator indicating the workpiece zero point is in the center of the geometry exactly on the rotation axis and that's very easy uh, when you start machining so that's uh, well, most CNC machinists will use that as a zero point for rotation axis machining. Okay, that about the other part parameters. Well, I want to give you a quick preview next what my toolpath will look like. In order to do that, I open the operation parameters. I select a bit smaller cutter. So I want to cut this with a three millimeter diameter bullnose cutter. And I set a very low precision just to quick give you a very quick preview what my toolpath will look like. You see it goes down in a number of layers. First at this level, all, uh, let me give you a right, no that doesn't help much. Uh, first on this level all my material is removed and on this level so the proto for the first operation in a part has an automatic roughing functionality it knows the cutting length of the cutter and it will not allow the cutter to sink deeper into the material than the cutting length of that cutter that's an automatic roughing functionality layers uh, which cannot be switched off for the first operation. Uh, here we also see those gray dashed lines. Those are in fact positioning lines. So lines uh, positioning moves in, in a rapid mode. So after the first layer has been finished, that's pro to start with the second layer. It comes here, it realizes, hey, I've done that already. I go up to positioning height, I travel uh, to the other side, I go down again and I uh, continue cutting. Okay, I want to change the direction of my toolpath. They are now along the X axis. I think it's better for rotation axis machining anyway the picture looks nicer when I reverse the direction I go to strategy and instead of along X I choose along A axis here we are again my toolpath are a bit clearer okay um, one thing that I wanted to draw your attention to is that the left the surface here on the left it is not machined which is very convenient obviously because uh, if this was machined as well then during machining the model would fall off my rotation axis device so the material is fixtured here to the rotation axis table a uh, three jolt chuck or any other method to fixture the material this outer side may not be machined we have achieved that in the operation parameters by switching off the borders that's proto did so automatically uh, when choosing rotation axis machining switching off borders uh, i should say setting the borders to no extra uh, for normal xyz machining this is not needed there you can machine all around your model because it remains flat on the machining table on, on the working table of your machine anyway but for rotation axis machining the outside surfaces may not be machined the same happens here on the right side you see here a small area is not machined well that's not what we want here we want everything machined and we can achieve that I'm making this segment a bit larger to the right I go to part parameters I go to my segment tab I set it to custom and I might just make it two millimeters larger it was 37 it will be 39 okay it has recalculate and now you can see 
every all material here is removed so uh, this block will be uh, fixtured on the left side only obviously there are also a uh, rotation axis machining with some support on the right side the tail stock when the model is larger that is needed for for uh, stability purposes if you have a tail stock then you do not want the cutter to remove material here that can also be be achieved in the part parameters i go again to segment and now I say the minimum Z, I make that a bit larger, say five millimeters. Again, recalculate, here are the five millimeters. My ball nose cutter will go a bit below uh, that limit, one and a half millimeter, the radius of the cutter deeper. So this diameter is 10 minus one and a half and one and a half. So a six millimeter area will be left free here okay that's uh, about borders and about support uh, we have a preview next for machining obviously we need the uh, toolpath to be much more accurate i go to a higher accuracy say 0.18 millimeters it will take on this PC about 30 seconds so I will pause my machine and back again almost finished now and you will see a very red area <laughs> so this is in fact not very efficient the first layer the second layer all layers are machined with tool paths on 0 0.18 millimeters distance so it will be much more efficient and the service quality will be better as well when we add a roughing operation so i just copy uh, copy this operation i have two i will call this one finish uh, finishing yes here we are a double click well here I do not need to change anything this one is okay but the other one needs to be changed because that now has become the roughing operation roughing I'm not a good typist roughing here I want to select roughing functionality a skin of half millimeter I won't elaborate on that you can follow the uh, instruction video on roughing I will make my layer thickness a bit thinner because rotation axis machining perhaps the material is not so very stable in in this uh, fixture so I'll do it a bit uh, slow and obviously my precision needs to be a far higher value okay this is my roughing functionality this is quicker here i'm a roughing toolpath minus five minus ten minus fifteen etc and when i also calculate finishing it again needs the 30 th seconds to do the finishing operation so i'll take a brief pause again okay back again Toolpath should be almost ready now. 94% takes a lot of time for some reason. Uh, here it was much quicker. Okay, here we are. Can rotate. Let me zoom in on the face area so I can use the lamps to make operations visible and invisible. Oh. Rotate. Okay, here we have the finishing tool path. You see the cutter compensation. We have the roughing tool path. So in fact, we're now ready to save the NC file and send it to the machine. Um, we could do some final details, for instance, for the roughing. For stability, it might be better to start at the right and then move to the left at the materials fixed on the left side that can be easily achieved with a strategy normally we have a start on the left but we can say reversed and then we start on the right side so that is something that can be easily done 
And another thing that you might do is say your cylinder of block of material is larger than the 25, so 50 millimeters D meter that we need here. Or in case you have a rectangular block, then obviously you want to cut the cutter to start higher. And that can be achieved by changing the maximum Z value of the uh, of, of the part segment. I won't do that now. I'll just save the NC program file and we'll call it Venus uh, I want to calculate uh, to save also the finishing so not divisible no and this is a very large file. Okay, and finally we can of course send that file to the machine and the only thing that you need to think of is to correctly set the work P0 point on your machine. It's on the left side of the model and it's with the tip of your three millimeter ball nose cutter with the tip of the cutter exactly on the rotation axis. When you choose that and send this file to the machine, you will end up with a great scale model of this Venus of Milo. Um, look forward to receiving some nice Venus files, very small in silver, very large in other materials. Uh, and well, looking forward to hearing what you can achieve with this model. Thanks.